What's up, Chode Nation? Today, we are talking about GameStop and taking in retro video games. Hey, Chodes, as you may or may not know, uh, GameStop is now testing uh, in, in certain markets, uh, taking in retro video games. Uh, not just PS2s, I know I did a video on that a little while back, but all retro video games. Um, Right now they're testing in New York and I think Birmingham, something like that, somewhere in Alabama. Um, I don't know why they chose those two, but I mean, it is what it is. That's what they chose. So um, I'm basically going to talk about why this is good, why this is bad, uh, who it's good for, who it's bad for. Um, I, I personally, I have a bunch of different views, which I'm going to share with you in this video. I'm going to try to keep it short, too. I don't want to be too too long-winded and ramble on for half an hour, which I probably will anyways. All right, guys. So, from a business standpoint, does this make sense? Yes. Um, well, I guess it depends on which, which end of the business that you're on. If you're GameStop, it makes sense because, I mean, let's face it, the future of gaming will be more than likely all digital. Okay, and we don't know when, could be five years, could be 10 years, could be 20 years down the road. I don't know, but the future will be all digital at some point. And I know it sucks, um, but we can't do anything about it. They're already priming us for that. You know, our kids are gonna grow up and they're gonna, they're gonna wanna get up, wake up and download the newest game instead of midnight launches and blah, 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 like, like, like we do. So from a business perspective, if you're GameStop, it makes sense because once everything goes all digital, where does that leave GameStop? Um, that leaves GameStop closing a bunch of stores unless they become just some kind of generic electronic store and not deal with video games at all. Um, if they do that, then I mean, why why would they be any different from Fry's or uh, Radio Shack or Cons or something of that nature? Probably wouldn't. Uh, so it makes sense from them. I mean, someone high up is actually thinking of the future, unlike Blockbuster, who refused to go the way of streaming, refused to go the way of, of uh, um, mail-ins like, like Gamefly and like uh, Netflix did, Redbox and whatnot, and now where's Blockbuster? nowhere to be found um from what i'm told there's still some along the southern border of texas and they're franchise stores only basically so someone at gamestop is thinking at least they're thinking how do we stay in the game how do we stay in business how do we keep from closing our stores how do we keep from laying off employees so i guess kudos to them for that my hat goes off to you for that one gamestop this can work but there's a couple of ifs all right so what they're doing basically is i think they're going to start taking in everything from nes uh, to just NES and, and, and newer. So Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, Dreamcast. I've heard that they're not doing like Turbo Graphics or not doing Neo Geo, uh, some more some more obscure things, some more expensive things like that. Why? I don't know, but that's just the way it is. Um, and so if they do things right, they can become the largest retro video game chain in the nation. They've got 4,000 stores, 5,000 stores, something like that. Okay, again, good for GameStop. That's good for GameStop. That's bad for mom and pop shops. Uh, obvious reasons. There's way more GameStops than there is, you know, your local your local video game chain. Um, and this this also gets into what this is going to do to the market and all that other stuff which i'm going to get into but we're talking just business so business wise it's good for them business wise it's bad for you know joe blow who might own a store up the road from you um it, it it's it's going to be a situation though where gamestop has to handle it correctly and right now well, they won't they'll fuck it up maybe maybe not though um maybe they watch this video and they get a couple of ideas I don't know. Maybe they see this video and go, fuck this fat bearded fuck. He don't know what he's talking about. Who knows? Um, I personally think, now this is what I think. This is not a factual, you know, video. I'm not going to be presenting exhibit A's and shit. Personally, I think that the way they should handle it, if they want to stay a player, if they want to stay open, keep doors open, keep employees, that it has to be in store. It has to be in store sales. Right now, they're they're thinking and they're talking about about uh, online sales only. Um, I think that's a bad idea because 
what makes them any different from Amazon or from eBay or from whatever else site is out there that you can just buy the game and wait on to get shit? What makes you any different? Nothing. You know, uh, I also think that it's one of those deals where it's out of sight, out of mind. Uh, if, you're, if your customers don't see it, if they don't walk in and it kicks them in the dick, they're going to forget about it. Why is this bad for mom and pop stores and what could it do to the market? <clears throat> this is bad for mom and pop stores because GameStop has advertising dollars. GameStop has a means of putting, of letting people know that they're, that they're now taking retro stuff and putting it out there. Okay. How? Well, they can pay for commercials. They can pay for ad space in, in magazines. Uh, but the biggest thing is just the stores themselves. Okay. Um, if you're, if you're current gen gamer, someone who doesn't give a damn about, about retro, walks in and boom, there's a sign right up front as soon as they walk in the door that says, hey, we now take retro video game stuff. Trading your old NES, your old Sega Genesis that's collecting dust, we take it. Um, what that's gonna do is, for someone who doesn't care about that kind of stuff, I obviously do, but for someone who doesn't, they're gonna go, oh, wait a minute, I got a box of that shit sitting at home in a closet or in an attic or something. It's doing nothing but taking up space and collecting dust. Let me gather all this stuff together. Let me take it up to GameStop. Let me trade it in and let me get some credit towards a new game. So now I don't have to spend 60 bucks if I have enough shit. I don't have to spend the full thing if it's only part, whatever the case may be. I'm not going to lie. When they when they started doing the PS2s, I traded in some PS2s. Um, I didn't know if they worked. They didn't have controllers. They didn't have power cords. They didn't have anything like that. My local my local retro store wouldn't have given me near what I got from GameStop out of them. It's just fact. There was some newer games that I wanted and I was able to trade these games in or these consoles in and I was able to buy these new games without spending anything out of, out of my pocket. Uh, the consoles I traded in cost me next to nothing. If you do what I do and a lot of you, you people do out there, you know you want you get as, as much shit as you can as cheap as you can and I'm no different. Uh, so I was able to trade in some old consoles. I was able to get some some current gen stuff um, uh, What doesn't even matter. Well, the, the show is one of the games I wanted on PlayStation 4 um, So I was able to get that without spending money out of my actual pocket So this is where like I said, they've got the means to be able to this then this is how it's gonna hurt You know your local your local retro game store Because there's gonna be so many different types of there's gonna be so many current gen gamers going into these stores. Okay, you got you got. Let's say this is the game. This is gamers. This is 100% gamers. The the ratio, the the percentage of retro gamers is down here, maybe maybe 20%. Okay, but even these 20% are still current gen gamers, like me. So for guys like me, or for guys who don't give a shit about their current stuff and don't know about you know. Um, this store, that store down the road that takes retro stuff, it's free money to them. Like those PS2s were free money to me. I was able to get stuff for, for giving you junk, basically, old shit. And it's going to be gonna be the same way, and that's going to hurt, um, that's going to hurt your mom and pop shop because now these people aren't going to be going to them because a lot of these places, their they're, they're modern day gaming selection is very limited it's very very limited they unless someone trades it in they don't have it they don't usually um they don't usually buy new games they don't buy the new consoles the the the, the profit margin on that stuff really is not that high uh believe it or not it's not that high if you're a chain like game start a wall game stop walmart target best buy whatever um because you buy more you probably get a little bit cheaper so your profit margin is just a little bit higher these mom and pop shops are not so that's why they don't buy a whole lot of new stuff. So it hurts them there. It might get less product going in there. But at the same time, these people who didn't even know about you and forgot about their stuff in their closet weren't going into that store anyways. They weren't going into your store anyways to trade their stuff in. So it may, it may not hurt you. Now, here's what it does for your mom and pop, sh mom and pop stores. Um, it could potentially be less stuff traded in because it's, okay, I want this new game let me go here instead of let me go here and buy a Nintendo 64 game I'm missing or something. Um, it just depends on the person. It all depends on the person. You know me, I'm going to do both. I'm, I'm going to take stuff and trade to you because I need this game. I'm going to take stuff and trade to GameStop because I want this game. You know, and there's quite a few people out there like me that are going to do that. There's people who 
won't trade anything in at all and there's people who never even heard of you who have heard of GameStop so they're gonna get more stuff in uh, what is it gonna do for the market that's an interesting question that can go a couple of different ways um, on one hand on one hand it could stabilize the market okay here's what I mean by that right now in, in my city that I live in there's one retro game store the nearest one to this particular store is probably 45 minutes away in Plano um, 45 minutes away in Denton so I live in Arlington if you live in Arlington you're watching this you know who I'm talking about so you're gonna go to that you're gonna go to that store because it's close you may not you may not want to drive 45 minutes one way 45 minutes the other way because then you got to make that drive back home and just sometimes that's just not fun but game stops there's between me and that store there's minimum two there's two game stops between me and that store and I honestly only live five minutes away from this store so but what here's what it could do it creates competition for these game stores and not all game stores are high priced don't that's not what I'm trying to fucking say here so don't put words in my mouth because some are high some are low we go to game stores all over the country we see all kinds of different price points so I know I can speak from from experience I can say this place is high this place is not but for those places that are a little bit higher what it could do now it could stabilize the market because right now retro video games are an all-time high okay yeah is it because of game or shows like the game chasers partially I'd be I'd be lying if I sat here and say we had nothing to do with it is it because of reviewers like you know uh, AVGN and like Path to NES Punk and you know yeah of course you know we all we all have our hand on it but really what it is the reason things are as high as, as they've gotten is the consumer the consumer is willing to pay these high prices so if someone's gonna come in and they're gonna pay for it they're just gonna jack the price higher 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 that's just the nature of the beast okay supply and demand if you will now what this could do this could help stabilize the pricing a little bit could okay and I'll give you the flip side of it you know also when I'm done so let's say Let's say your local, you know, um, your local retro shop has Super Mario, Bro Super Mario Brothers three for thirty dollars, which sadly is is kind of the going rate for it these days. And they've got one or two, all right. But your GameStop that you pass before you get to that store has fifteen of them. And the GameStop, the second GameStop you pass before you're on your way to while you're on your way to that retro store has ten of them. And the one five minutes down the road from the store, because GameStops are like Starbucks, they're fucking everywhere, right? They've got another 15, 20 copies, all right? A company like GameStop isn't one, they don't want to sit on product. They don't want to sit on product and have it sit around and collect us and not buy, not buy, not buy, not sell, not sell, not sell. All of a sudden, someone comes in who just absolutely wants that Mario Brothers 3. Here's your $30. Oh, fuck, finally. All right, now we've got 100 more. So with if they got a bunch of games, in theory now, what they are going to do is lower the price just to push it out the door. So what that's going to do is for your average gamer or even collector for that matter, who can go to GameStop and get game X for $5, $10 less than this game store over here. This game store, if they want to stay competitive, what they've got to do is price match. Okay. At least to some degree. You got to come down on your price some. You got to do something to stay competitive. If you don't, you don't make money. So GameStop taking retro games, in that theory, could help stabilize the market and bring it down. It could. And if this game store is stubborn, this retro game store is stubborn, and they don't want to match GameStop, guess what? You're going out of business. And then GameStop comes in and buys all of your stock for pennies on the dollar, and they've just got more shit to sell to everybody else. GameStop is a corporation, okay? GameStop, the bottom line is dollars. It's it's profits, it's money's made. And that's why I think it could help stabilize because they're going to want to get product in the door and they're going to want to get it right back out the door. If something sits on the shelf, it does not make money. Okay? Even sports games, common sports games are 5, 8 bucks now in stores, and it's fucking ridiculous. Madden on Nintendo 64 is a $1 game. Okay, there was a hundred million thousand fucking copies made. It should not be five dollars, eight dollars. Shouldn't fucking happen. Now, on the flip side, it could, it could raise the price. 
because it's it's going to be more seen, more known. People are it's going to be everywhere basically, and GameStop might have this mentality of well, we're going to charge what we want to charge because just like game game store F down the road, they do they make money, so fuck it, we're going to do the same thing. It could go either way. It really could. Um, if they if they are priced more more than your local retro store, then that's good for the retro store. They're going to be the, the low person in town. They're going to make the money because why would you go here and buy this game for more than you can buy for over here? It doesn't make sense, right? Unless you're just one of those guys who GameStop is, is half a mile closer, so fuck it, I'm going to stop into GameStop. Now, what does this do for guys like me? Collectors. Okay, um, and, and, and just I'm, I'm not just a collector, I'm a gamer. I play. I play as much as I can, okay? Trust me. I have way more shit than I can probably play. But what does this do for collectors? Um, honestly, I don't see it as being a bad thing. Uh, what it's probably going to do is make stuff a little bit more readily available because people who haven't traded their shit into retro store in their town are gonna see GameStop takes it now. Oh shit, let me take it in there and let me trade it in. So it could actually make games more available, okay? It could bring those games that are collecting dust and that are that are dead, it could bring life back into them, all right? If you're like me, I'm going for a complete, you know, 64 set right now. That's one of the things that I'm, I'm actively, I'm constantly looking for 64 games. Hey, if I can walk into GameStop and see Five, find five or ten games, fifteen games, reasonably priced that I haven't seen at my local game stores. Of course, I'm gonna pick them up. Okay, why wouldn't I? If the price is right, I'm gonna pick it up. It's not. I'm not one of these GameStop haters. Oh, fuck GameStop. And if you know what, if that's you, fine. Be you. That that's you. If you don't like GameStop's practices or what GameStop gives you for trading and whatnot, just don't go. It's that fucking simple. Which brings me to. Okay, I'll get to that in a second, but. It's it's gonna make games more readily available. It could it could make the little Samsons. It could make the Haganes. It could make the the sculptors cut uh, clay fighters. It could make those more available to the public. And the more that are out there, theoretically, the more that are out there, the less the, the less the price. Because if you have if you have if you have it everywhere. You can't go and charge whatever the hell you want because, well, fuck it, I'll just wait. I'll wait. Because I'm going to find it somewhere cheaper because you got a ton of them. Okay? Also, what it's going to do for you, too, is this. Let's say I walk into a GameStop. I go, hey, do you guys have Zombie Nation on NES? And they say, no, we don't. Would you like us to find a store that does? Yes. Yes, I would, please. So they go and they look it up. Oh, look, there's one down the road there's one in this town that town is, is kind of close do you want me to call and tell them to hold it for you yes please or hey i found one in nebraska do you want us to have it shipped here yes please <laughs> so now you can go in you can get this game without having to fight someone on ebay another you know another bidder without having to pay the shipping without without bullshit basically and and you you can find this game and if you're the guy who will pay retail for something like that, then that's great for you. That, that helps you, actually, is what it does. Because now you've got this, this system, this network of 4,000, 5,000 stores, whatever the case may be, however many stores they have, where it's all linked together. So you can go in and say, I need, I need, I need Madden 99 on, on Nintendo 64. Do you have one? Uh, no, sir, we don't have one, but there is one in California. Do you want us to have them, have them ship it out here for you? Yes. Have them ship it. Have them call me. Boom. Now you get a game you're missing. Now you get a game who, if, if you're not like us, you can't travel. You know, you, you don't go all over the country like we do. Now you can search all over the country and not have to leave your city. So it actually works out for you that way. Um... Now, again, I, I, I'm going to say it again. I said it once, I'll say it again. I think all this is dependent on if the games are carried in store. You have to have the product in store GameStop for this to actually work for you, in my opinion. Because like I said, out of sight, out of mind. Customers, people want instant gratification a lot of the times. Okay, They want to be able to walk in, pick up the game, go home, put it in, put it on a shelf, put it aside, do whatever they're going to do with it. That's what people want. 
if you're online only, your mom and pop that's watching this, breathe a sigh of relief because I don't see them hurting you too much. I really don't. I just don't see them hurting you too much. And you know what? If you're if you're a store that's worth your salt, that has good customer service, that has good practices, good good prices and whatnot, you're not gonna have to worry about GameStop anyways because people are still gonna come to you. Okay, why do they go to you now when there's probably another option around? In, in my area, Dallas-Fort Worth area, there, there really is a lot of options. There's a ton of options. But why do I go to the stores I go to? Because I like the people. You know, I, I know the people. I get, I get treated right. I get taken care of. And yes, a lot of that has to do with because I'm on YouTube, whatever. And, and that, that's just an advantage that, that unfortunately you guys don't have. But even so, you go in and the more you get to know people, the more they're going to take care of you. Oh, you're a good customer. Let me let me give you a little bit off. You know, you're going to be able to walk up with five, six games and say, yo, I know you got these at five bucks each, but if I buy all of them, can I get them at three a piece or something? It could work for you. And the same thing could work for you at GameStop if you know if you know a store manager there or something, um, which I, I know a couple. Hey. I'm, here's what I'm looking for. Give me a call if you find something. So GameStop taking retro games is not necessarily a bad thing. It could be a bad thing. It could not be a bad thing. It all just depends on your view, where you fall in the spectrum of do you own a store? Um, are you looking for better prices? Are you whatever, whatever the case may be. So that that's my thoughts. And, and I don't have... I don't have a true opinion on it. I'm not vested with like a store or anything like that. Um, and you know, some some people have argued me and said, "Well, you're not going to be able to find it as easily at at flea markets and at thrift stores and at at um, uh, garage sales and stuff like that." Well, it, it's not that easy to find it now. Not when you're looking for certain games and you're looking for fillers and stuff like that to beef your collection up. Uh, but th th those guys who are selling this stuff in a yard sale a lot of times now they're looking shit up anyways on ebay these people probably aren't going to gamestop to trade their stuff in anyhow so it will still be there it'll still be there you just gotta look and that's the key really to to game chasing just be 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 persistent and consistent so there it is, guys. There's my thoughts on GameStop selling retro games. Uh, put your thoughts down below. Uh, let me know what side of the fence you fall. Like I said, I'm 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 kind of neutral on it. I've I've looked at it from several different angles, and I'd like to think all angles. I uh, hope I didn't leave anything out. Let me know what you think. As always, if you have a subject maybe you want to hear my thoughts on, put it down below and subscribe and all that other bullshit. Tell your friends about me. Later, Choge. Jay out. Jordan, how are you? Don't hey Jordan, hi, how are you me? Jay, you have videos to make. People want to know what's on your mind. So stop slacking. Let's get back to work. <coughs> Motherfucker. Alright, let's get started.